Sup nerds, I'm Tom. Let's pretend it's the 90s and go to Blockbuster and rent Die Hard on VHS. First off, I want to say that one of the coolest things about this party game is the packaging. You can kind of see this parking lot thing here, but the way that the box uh, looks like a VHS tape and you open it up and th this uh, actually looks like a VHS tape and everything. You see that there and that there. Woo! You know, I think um, before I even talk about the gameplay, oh, and there, there, they gave you a membership card, which is great, you know, so without even talking about the gameplay, I do want to say that I think this production quality, you know, they just knocked it out of the park. Big Potato tends to do a lot of uh, weird or unique packaging with their games. Some, sometimes it's better than others, but this time I think it's probably the absolute best that they've ever done. All the cards look like VHS tapes and everything, oh, the glare there is bad. Also, since this is a party game, they included a timer, and this timer came in the box with batteries. That's pretty dope. How the game works though is extremely simple. It's not, it's not even really like a movie trivia game, it's more of a guess the movie game. Uh, you split up into two teams and uh, you will decide, you will kind of pull a representative from your team to first of all do a head to head with the other team to see who's gonna go first. Um, which actually is a, is a bigger deal. It's not just going first, because when you go first you get, you draw six cards and you look at the three that you're gonna keep and the three that they're gonna try and get. So the three that you keep, you're gonna try and get your team to guess, and the three that they keep, they're gonna try and get their team to guess. So it is a pretty big deal, because there are some movies that are kind of, well, they're all relatively popular movies. Maybe there's some that like you haven't seen or you know they haven't seen, or they're just kind of like a difficult movie to, to act out. I don't know, maybe, uh, one Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, maybe you don't know the best way, or it's been a long time you've seen it, or maybe you haven't seen it, but you know what it is. Dr. Doolittle, like how are you going to act out? Or, I mean, you have one quote and one word, so that, that is the thing. So when you're trying to get your teammates to guess the uh, the words, or guess the movies, there's you either have to act it out, do one word, or do a quote. So you get the three movies, you decide what's going to go where, and then you have, whatever this is, I think like 30 seconds, to get them to guess all three, or even more if you can. If you're going first, and you get them to guess all three, you could grab one of the uh, other team's cards and try and get your team to guess that one. The only problem is, if you're unsuccessful, you just gave the other team like an additional clue for that movie, if that makes sense. Now that's all fine, well and good. That doesn't sound super special, but there are a couple good twists to it. So first of all, the, the way that you win is you actually need a movie of each different genre. So like uh, comedy, drama, horror, family movies, sci-fi movies, uh, all-time classics, which I think one of the other games, I think the Mr. Lister's Quiz Shootout, if, if, that, if I'm remembering that right, I think that had the same type of thing you had to get different types of drinks or something. So it wasn't just, you know, the first person to get 10 movies. Oh, we just happen to pick, you know, 10 Disney movies and you have a person on your team who knows Disney really well. You have to have like a Kevin Bacon, you know, you have to have a really wide range of variety. But I think my favorite part is actually the the head-to-head -head battle, mainly because uh, I'm in film school. So I tended to be the one chosen for the representative for my team kind of the most. But you uh, flip up one card and you go back and forth like, let's say this is movies with a number in the title. Movies that are more than 40 years old. That, that one's not the great. Okay. Movies with planes. Movies set in New York. Movies beginning with S. You know, so any of these, you guys go back and forth naming as many movies of, of those as you can until uh, one person just, just gives up and they lose. And there actually is what they, they call a sequel rule in the rules where, like, you know, if I said Star Wars you know, that's talking about like the whole series. I can't say Star Wars and then you say Empire Strikes Back and then I say Return of the Jedi and then you say Phantom Menace. You know, like we could do, cause we could do that all day. I mean, it does kind of, the line gets kind of blurry cause it's like, I said, Laura Croft, Tomb Raider. And then you said Tomb Raider. So I'm like, okay, it's not, is, I mean, I don't know. That might be the same series cause they're both Tomb Raider, but what, but you know, there's the Angelina Jolie one and the Alicia Vikander one. So I don't know, how do, you, how do you rectify that? But that's something I think you can figure out on your own. There also is a rule where um, you can steal somebody else's uh, card uh, if you have three of the same color cards. So if you have three purples, you can steal somebody else's orange or whatever. Um, it's just a good way to, to actually make scoring kind of count uh, in the game a bit because you can play a lot of party games where scoring mechanisms feel like they're only added as a necessity. When really, it's a party game, you guys just wanna have fun. 
You just want to act out some movies, get people to guess things, you know. Um, so while we did, did play with the scoring rules, you know, ooh, let's take, you know, we're going to spend these three purples to take their purple, you know, so that way we have, we keep the same number, we're still seven away from, you know, we're, we're still, we're seven, we have seven movies and we need, eight, you know, an eighth um, but now they are, they have six instead of eight. So I get it. It's, it's fun and whatever. My general consensus with party games is just have fun and not really worry about the score. But I do like it when big potato games make scoring a bit interesting instead of just, you know, uh, do it until somebody hits 30 points or do it until somebody has 10 movies. Like, you know, there's at least a, a hint of strategy in there. I do like that the rules are pretty loosey-goosey. Because, again, with party games, you're probably going to be loosey-goosey with it. You're not, you don't want to be too, oh, you can't use proper nouns. You know, you can't use this if there's a quote. Like, quote specifically says, like, you should use a quote from the movie. But also, if you can't remember a quote from the movie, make one up. You know? Um, the only thing is, of course, you can't use the name of the movie in the clue. So when the clue is, when, when the movie is Godzilla, and the dude says, Gojira, and I said, you can't do that, that's the name of the movie. He says, no, that's not the name of the movie, I just said a Japanese word. That is bullshit, Ray, you s***. So that guy's dead now. So if you're still wondering what I think about this blockbuster game, I f***ing love it. Now, I know I'm kind of biased when I say that I love it because I love movies, you know, obviously I'm in film school and I kind of felt like I was the one who played the game the most, so to speak, right? Like, at least for my team, I got elected a lot more, especially because I was going to probably do better in this head-to-head -head, uh, uh, thing more than, than other people were. Um, oh, and you can also, you can act out clues uh, to try and give to your teammate. Like, you know, like you can be like, because I'm on a broomstick and that's Harry Potter. But the game really is just fun. You know, it's not super original. It's just, you know, guessing movies. I mean, I again, I really like the head-to-head. -head. I like that it has acting, one word, and quota, and you can decide which movie goes where for that. And the way that you win is by getting one of each different type of movie, and you can steal movies from people. Like, again, just little tweaks like that bring a party game from, you know, just... Uh, there's kind of chaos, right? People doing stuff to where they feel like there's a bit of strategy and we need to kind of hone in. And, oh, I really need my team to guess this what this orange one, which was orange horror. I really need them to guess this horror movie. And I don't know if they're going to know horrors, but we really need a horror. Maybe I could do these other two Disney and then we'll have three and we can steal from them and we'll have horror. But then we'll be missing a Disney. But Disney's are easy for us. I also think it's crazy that they got the rights for Blockbuster at all. I mean, it must have been pretty easy. All they had to do was go talk to like... Greg or whoever owns the only blockbuster left and be like, hey, is it cool if we do this? And he'll be like, yeah. Now, while I do really love the gameplay, probably the best part is like the table presence. Like, sh you know, showing this VHS to anybody over the age of 30, they think it's amazing. Like, oh my God, I remember VHS is so cool. You know, the fact that this thing folds out, you have this little um, parking lot, which this didn't even really need to be included, but it just adds more table presence. People always walk by and say, oh wow, what's that? That looks awesome. You know, I, I, I really can't recommend this game enough. I'm gonna put a purchase link in the description box down below so you can get yourself a copy. I highly recommend you do so. I also highly recommend that while you're down there, you subscribe to our channel so you'll never be bored.